happy Monday. Welcome back to Ask Amy. Uh, thanks for coming back after I was absent last week. I took a, a short vacation, but I'm back and happy to be back here with another question. So today I have a question from Joe in Dubai. I love um, I love seeing all the different places. Like this is such a funny, uh, just a thing I totally geek out on in the school and little school of big changes. All the different countries that are represented. Last I counted, it was 29, but it's always kind of moving around a little bit. But um, I always want one of those. First of all, that just blows my mind. I mean, 29 countries, people from 29 countries are are listening to this and you know getting exposed to this understanding and in our community and it's incredible. And I, I always want one of those maps. Um, actually, I'm on, on my wall over here, a physical one. But I want like a, a map that can show, without having people's names, that can just show all the different places that people in our school uh, are from. And I've had Bonnie, my tech assistant person, like scouring the internet looking for some kind of uh, app that does that or some kind of plug-in that would do that for us. Um, and we haven't found it. So if you know of a plugin that does that, please let us know. But it's amazing. I don't know. I just love that so much that this world feels so small and in a really, really good way. It's so huge, but it's so small. You know, all the, the layers of separation and difference and stuff, they just, as we just keep exploring all this and I just keep growing myself and getting to learn from all of you and, and share this and be in this understanding, I don't know. I mean, everything seems like it's just getting a little smaller and simpler and everything feels really close to home, which is, um, which is really awesome. So this question is from Dubai, which is like down the street, I guess, from Joe. So let me read Joe's question. Um, she says, uh, she says some stuff. She's been reading the book and watching some of these videos. And she says, I think it finally clicked today. I got this insight that life is supposed to flow with ease and anytime it doesn't, that's just alerting us to the fact that we're lost in our thinking. Yes, that's awesome, Joe. <laughs> that's exactly what's going on. So, you know, life flows. I mean, it, I don't know if we'd say it's supposed to, but it does. It sure seems to. That It flows in nature. It flows through us all the time. We either feel that we're either just kind of being moved through all of this in a really beautiful, uh, easy kind of way, natural kind of way, or we're not. And when we aren't, that's okay. That's not a problem. It's actually a good thing. It's showing us that we've gone from being in this natural flow of life to being up in our heads thinking about life. So I love that distinction. That's a beautiful little simple distinction. We're either in life or we're thinking about life. And even as I say it like that, it's not an either or, you know, it's not really strict, like don't take that too literally, but sometimes we're really just feeling the flow of things. We're just in it. A lot of times we're like that. All of us, I mean, you, you know, we talk about kids as an example of that, or people, when we're doing what we love to do, we're in the flow, we're not paying attention to anything, we lose track of time. But it's so much more, that's true, but it's so much more commonplace and natural and normal than even just that. You know, it's like all the time you're just in whatever you're in, you're just in that flow of life being moved forward. And then sometimes something is kind of jarring, it like wakes us up, we don't feel well, or we get confused, or something feels like it's wrong, or whatever that is. And like you say, anytime it's not flowing with ease, it's alerting us to the fact that we're lost in our thinking. That right there, Joe, that right there can change a life. That has changed so many lives, just seeing that. And, and having like a full stop after that. So what we want to do is we see, oh, okay, here's how it works. Life flows. When it's not flowing, I'm in my thinking. Okay, now what do I do about that? Now how do I fix my thinking? Now how do I get back in the flow? Now, now what? Then what? What do we do? You know, like there's all this after the fact that we humans tend to bring into it. And again, that's just our thinking. So we don't have to go there at all. I really want you, Joe, and everyone to sit with this. I mean, this is huge. This is huge and profound and can change anything really because we start to just see 
what our wisdom is, like how it's communicating with us. We see how life is communicating with us. And we just kind of, it, it's more about like just moving or just hanging on, hanging out for a minute, letting us be moved forward with ease or staying back here and just kind of waiting until we're out of our thinking and then we can flow again with ease. I think I might sneeze. Maybe not. Um, so this is awesome, Joe. I love how you how you say this here because you say that amazing insight, which is right on, perfect, perfect thing to kind of full stop sit with. And then you say, where the problem begins for me is here. Now I'll read what the problem looks like because I think that's super helpful and human and relatable and me too, right? But notice that, okay? So, oh, I see how it works. Life flows with ease. And then when there's a problem, that's just alerting me that I'm in my thinking. Okay, but here's the problem. <laughs> you see, Joe? So it's like you kind of saw that, and then you're like, yeah, but it, that can't be the end of it. That can't be it. There's got to be more. Here's where, it, here's where it gets sticky for me. And yes, I mean, for sure, you're a human being. Here's where it gets sticky. It's going to get sticky again. But look at what you just said. Where it's getting sticky right there means, oh, there's where I got back up in my head again. So you have this beautiful insight, and then you get back up in your head, because that's what we do. But we just want to see, go back to the insight, right? Like, oh, oh, okay, I see what this means. Now it looks like there is a problem. Oh, so life's not flowing with ease anymore. Oh, so that's showing me that I'm back in my head. See that? It's, it's so much smaller of a circle and so much simpler than it seems. We want to make it this big circle and fix a bunch of things and then come back back home. No, it, like home's right. You're not really going anywhere. There aren't all these things to fix and solve for in the meantime. It's just seeing that one thing that you pointed out. So let me read because again, you're not, you're not alone in this <laughs> at all. Um, so let me read where your thinking goes. And you, you, as you listen to this, see that that's what's going on here. It's like you had this insight and then your thinking got sped up again. So here's what your sped up thinking said, just in case someone can relate. Where the problem begins for me is here. We still need to attend to practical things, like you have an impending exam and you can't for the life of you motivate yourself to study because you have health issues which affect your level of motivation. Okay, at other times you just don't care, but you made the decision to start something and now you have to complete it. At one point you realize that studying and making a career was the only way to get respect and perhaps leave a less than happy marriage. Okay, so, so, so it's like, oh, I see, life flows with ease. And when it's not, that's our alarm system that we're caught up in our thinking. We're up in our heads for a minute. But here's where that breaks down because what about, we still have to attend to practical things, right? Like I still, I committed to, to taking this class and passing this exam and because it looked like the right thing to do. So now that I've committed, I have to do it. So you see how you went from the life flowing with ease and we all do this all day, every day. It's not a problem. You see how you went from that flowing with ease back up into your head. Now we don't need to solve for that. I don't know how to get you to study for your exam. We could chain you to a chair and put the book in front of you. I don't know. That doesn't mean you're going to read it. Doesn't mean you're going to retain anything. Like, I have no idea how to get someone to do something that they think they want to do. But what you want to see is what you said. Go back to your insight. Oh, so here's where it gets really messy. It looks to me, I'm speaking for you, Joe. It looks to me like, like there's a contradiction here. How can life flow with ease and I still be practical and kind of do things? Well, of course it can. We all do things all the time. We all are practical human beings walking around on earth, doing stuff, not doing stuff. Life keeps going. Life doesn't care. You take the test, you don't. You finish the class, you don't. Maybe you make a commitment, you don't finish that commitment. I don't know. It's all just life moving through us. But where it starts getting really, like you say, where the problem begins, where it starts really looking like it breaks down and you feel it, you can feel it. Life is no more, no longer feeling like ease. That's where you're in your head. So, but where all this stuff looks like, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but I'm sick. Yeah, but I have to study. Yeah, but how am I going to do it? How do I meet myself? That's where your thinking is. That's where you're in your head. Now, how do we get out of our heads? You just wait. You see that, oh, my mind is jumping up, confusing things, making this all look really important. 
I know what that means. I don't I don't need to sift through that. I'm just going to hang out. Pretty soon my thinking is going to start to clear. Like the faucet up at the cabin when you haven't been there all winter comes out a little bit dirty and a little sputtery in the beginning. You just let it run and before you know you have nice clean water again. That's all we're doing. So you get a little sputtery in your head, a little dirty water. Just let it go. Pretty soon you're back in that natural easy flow. So Joe um, <clears throat> kind of summarizes your question and says, so what do we do when we know we have to get something done, but we don't or can't do it? And then she tells me some of the strategies. I sleep on it for three to four days. I let myself take breaks. I realize I'm making things worse by procrastinating, but that doesn't get me anywhere. So what do we do when we know we have to get something done, but we just can't or don't do it? I don't know, but... That doesn't feel good. I've been there many times, everyone has. I know I have to get something done, but I'm just not doing it. I would know from the feeling of that, I'm not saying I personally know this every single time, but what we know about how life works and what you get to know, the more you explore this and see about how, how we work and you get kind of fluent in this, the more, the quicker you start to see, oh, I'm really caught up. Now, that's just the way I'd say it in my head, or I don't know the way I'm saying it right now in my head, but you'd see it in your way. Like you said here, oh, I'm being alerted to the fact that I'm lost in my thinking. So it either really looks like I have to do this thing, and there's a ton of meaning attached to that, which is all made up in our thinking. Or it really looks like I'm definitely not going to do it or I can't do it. Like whatever that is, there's a whole conceptual tangle there that doesn't sit well with us, that looks important, looks meaningful, but your feelings show you. That stuckness, that procrastination, all of that is just there to show you, okay, there's something here that I'm tangled in. Do you need to know what it is? No, not necessarily. If you look and you see it, wonderful. You know, if you look and you see, oh, I see what's going on. I told myself at some point that if I could pass this exam and I could pass this class and I could get a degree, and I'm just taking this from your question, Joe, then maybe that will make it easier for me to leave my unhappy marriage. Now, maybe you see that. Maybe you see, oh, that's the story my mind made up, that if I can do these things, I can leave my marriage, therefore I can be happy. Maybe it's helpful. Like I think it's super helpful when that pops out at you and you can see what the thinking is and kind of where you got there because then it shows you again, oh, that's the story I'm telling, but that might not be true. Now, sometimes we don't know. Sometimes you just sit in what feels like procrastination, paralysis. You just sit there in an action and you just feel horrible. Sometimes you just feel like crap. You just can't do anything and you have no idea why. And that's okay because we don't have to get in there and find that story and figure out where it came from and when it started. We just know from that feeling, like you said, Joe, oh, I'm lost in my thinking. My mind has made up something, attached to it as if it's true and real, and now it's beating me up for it. That's it. Happens to every human on earth multiple times a day. What do you do? Nothing. You see that that's what's going on. You see from the alarm, okay, I'm caught up. Something isn't sitting right. Maybe you sit with it. I mean, I would sit with that and be like, okay, well, what is it? What am I not seeing here? Like, where am I, where am I mixed up? Or just knowing, okay, I'm mixed up, and I'm just going to see what happens maybe in 20 minutes or an hour or tomorrow. See how this looks to me tomorrow. It is so simple that... It's really hard to get sometimes, and it's really hard to trust sometimes because, again, we're just so used to doing more and thinking through it and thinking the circle is like this. So you're at home. You feel bad. You need to go figure out all these things in this big, wide circle, and then you get to be back home. But it isn't like that. You're at home. You see that you're feeling bad. You're still at home. <laughs> like there's no big, like, oh, let me do all these things. Let me think about it. Maybe I do this. Maybe it's that. Like human minds do that and that's okay it's just how they work but that's not necessary we can just see caught up oh i'm still at home i'm just caught up in my thinking i love this joe like when when someone and this happens all the time in our community in the school like somebody will say something let's start a question with 
well, I know this, and it's totally right, and it's really profound, and it's like if you could just sit in what you say you know, so if you could just sit in this insight, that's where it's going to start to unpack, and they'll be like, oh, well, I know, you know, I know I still have this health in me, but I'm really scared that I'm falling into this deep depression that I'll never get out of. I was like, okay, well, let's go back over here for a minute. <laughs> like, let's, let's stay, not just to like sugarcoat things, but like, let's stay in here because all of this is just a bunch of stuff. <laughs> it's a bunch of thinking that looks real, a bunch of concepts and contradictions and things that just look real. And we're so used to thinking we need to solve for that. We don't need to solve for that. So I love when the insight comes and then the confusion comes like, oh, but I, that's not enough. I still have this question. No, that's always enough. It's always enough. If we can just relax and be in that and, and let our mind just say, okay, you just go off and try to solve whatever you think you need to try to solve. But I know that's not where it's at. I know that peace and clarity and the answer to anything I'm caught up in is beneath all of that. Huge, 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 huge to see. So thank you, Joe, for sending this question. I hope this is helpful. It's a definitely this whole procrastination in action. I want to do this, but why am I not? So, so common. And there's always some idea, some specific agenda, something we think, oh, this has to happen in order for me to be happy. And that's just not true. Nothing has to happen in order for us to feel different. Nothing has to happen in order for our entire experience of life to change. Nothing on the outside at all. Huge, awesome thing to kind of sit with and consider that for yourself. Like, what if nothing ever changed in my life? No outside circumstance ever changed in my entire life. It stays like this forever. How happy could I be? How peaceful could I be? How much freedom could I feel in this right now? That really starts to kind of wake up for you where your experience is coming from. So thank you guys so much for sending your questions. Um, I wanted to let you know that the Little School of Big Change reopens for it's only twice each year that I run this. And it's happening in two weeks from today, which is like insane. I just got back from vacation. So I'm kind of like, oh my gosh, two weeks. I, I love it though. It's super exciting. There's a lot of stuff coming up in the next two weeks. Um, one of those things is my totally free four-part video series. They're like 20-minute, half-hour videos. There's four of them, and they get released every other day. And that starts um, next Monday, March 4th. And they're really, like, they're just, whether you care about the school or ever going to join the school or not, whether you're in the school already, it doesn't matter. They're really great videos that I put a lot into that walks people through this and starts to show you why our change attempts and all the things we do, the forcing and the getting over procrastination and all the stuff we've tried to do over the years has given us like a little bump most of the time, but hasn't led to this deep change because it's, it's kind of incremental. It's a different type of change that most of us are out there trying. Almost everyone is out there trying. What I'm talking about, what we talk about in the school and exploring this understanding that I share is is not that kind of change at all. It's a vertical kind of change. It's a change in consciousness and how we see everything. That's exactly how nothing can change on the outside, but everything can look and feel and be different in your experience of life. So um, it's really cool. And the, these four videos, again, they go really in depth. Um, Get on, that, get on that list, sign yourself up there to get those delivered to you. And that's at thechangeseries.com. Because just those in and of themselves, again, if you never do anything else, that's fine. But those in and of themselves are super helpful. And if you know someone that you've been you know, wanting to share this understanding with, but you don't know how, or you're not sure what to send them, um, which book should I give them, or which podcast, or what's, what are they going to resonate with, that might be a perfect thing. A free, it's a ton of really great content that goes into this in a deep way. So that's at thechangeseries.com. Right now it's just a sign up page because again, the first video comes out a week from today. But if you sign up, you'll get that on Monday. Um, and then yeah, check out, uh, join the wait list at littleschoolofbigchange.com so that you find out as things are coming up for the school. Um, if you wanna see more of kind of some of the lessons, little snippets of some of the lessons to get a feel for what it's like in there, go to the littleschoolofbigchange.com slash highlights. And we have a four part, four or five part highlight series. I think it's five parts. Um, short videos that just give you a feel for what the content and curriculum is like in there. 
So thank you guys so much for listening. A lot of great stuff coming up. Let me know um, if you have any questions at all about the school or about anything I share here. Send me your questions. And I'll be back here next Monday and see you guys then. Thanks, everyone.